What's going on there guys? Good evening. Good Friday evening. Party time. It is July 29th, 2022, about 7.40 p.m. California time here along the west coast. Latest quake shows a 4.3 up there along the uh, Kermadec Island, or not Kermadec Island, excuse me. It's actually the Japan Trench and the Kurokamchaka Trench up here showing quite a bit of swarming kicking up throughout the day today. Uh, also a 0.9 here in California. Looks like right around the central California area. Uh, before I jump into this, I want to talk about a potential impact tomorrow here on planet Earth. Okay, I'm sure you guys have heard about it. It's a Chinese rocket. Uh, no one knows specifically exactly where it's going to hit. I'm going to show you that here in a little bit. Some coordinates of where they think it might land. But there's still a lot of uncertainty because that thing's up there flying around. Uh, pretty quickly. So a Chinese rocket is about ready to enter into the atmosphere and crash down into Earth. Of course, planet Earth is covered by quite a bit of water, right? So what's the chances of it hitting on land? Well, I, th I think it's uh, pretty high. Uh, the 25 ton core stage of Long March 5B rocket will enter Earth's atmosphere tomorrow at 2.05 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now this has not been updated in about eight hours. It is now um, I'll, I'll give you guys the update here in a little bit on specific time plus or minus five hours. Okay, <laughs> so this rocket was launched uh, uh, less than a week ago. Uh, it was the uh, second module of for China's uh, Tiagong space station on July 24th. Most of the rocket body will burn up but big chunks of it will survive the fiery passage, probably about five to nine tons surviving. Could you imagine that? A nine ton piece of debris falling on a highly populated city or your residential neighborhood? Ooh, baby, that's not good. I'd be talking major lawsuit there. Uh, it looks like based on the core stage orbit, uh, we know these hunks will come down somewhere between 41 degrees north latitude and 41 degrees south latitude. Europe and most of North Africa appear to be out of the line of fire based on the latest forecast. We also know the debris footprint will be large with some pieces likely falling several hundred miles uh, from each other. Holy smokes. So this rocket is zooming around Earth at about 17,000 miles per hour. That's kind of a big deal, right? So when you're guesstimating potential re-entry even a few minutes is a long distance so there's not there's a huge error uh when it comes to trying to predict the exact location and re-entry time uh for this rocket all right so this is from space.com this specific rocket here i want to go over here to uh this model right here okay this is spacetrack.org now these folks, uh, well, they monitor a lot of stuff up there in space and they also monitor re-entry stuff such as this Long March 5B rocket that I'm just talking about. So the latest tracking and impact prediction, the TIP, as of uh, just earlier, earlier this afternoon, there'll be an update here in uh, a few hours, looks like uh, projected re-entry is at... Uh, 36.2 longitude longitude oh no latitude and longitude at 226.7 you guys want to see where that's at so i pulled that up check out where that's at just off the west coast here of me so got to remember here the entry i'm not for sure of, of the trajectory of this rocket which way it's traveling but this is the exact coordinates here 36 latitude 36.2 longitude 226.5 so a little off on the let um longitude but it's very close so we got to remember here if it takes 20 minutes late to re-entry we could be talking about this thing entering into the west coast here landing somewhere along a highly populated region such as san francisco sacramento or my backyard that would be absolutely my luck if this thing were to land uh, in my backyard. I, I don't know what I would do. But the chances are high here. We have a west coast impact with this type of latitude and longitude coordinates. Remember, 
Uh, here is the, if you guys don't believe me, you guys are welcome to check it out yourself. Here in a few hours, we'll see a, a uh, updated map or an updated uh, expected re-entry. Latitude, 36.2. Longitude, 226. Latitude, 36.2. Longitude, 226.5. If you take this and kind of go over just a little bit. Here, hold on a second. We're going to go stand by for just a second. I'm kind of moving this around here. So here's a cursor, 36 point. Uh, 36.2 is what they're talking about. And uh, longitude's going to be 226, right? 226 point. You know, this this thing's kind of not easy to work with when you're working on a, on a computer here such as mine. But roughly, roughly within this area here, folks. Let me see if I can get the exact coordinates. Stand by. We got uh, 36.2 and 226. Point seven. 226.7. Right about there. Either way. Okay, so I was a little off. <laughs> a little bitty off. But um, uh, that still puts the West Coast in target here. Of course, as we're zooming around, this is going to change. But these are the coordinates right here, 36.31, uh, 226.58. Roughly off the coast of California, okay? Can't get any, you know, super precise. But that's kind of a big deal when, when we're guesstimating re-entry here. All it takes is for it to arrive a little bit later than expected. And wham, bam, one of these cities out here along the west coast could get hit uh, from this, what, 5 to 9, almost 10 ton hunk of metal and it could be spread out so this is a very highly populated region here in california of course i live up here around chico and i definitely don't want something like that crashing into my backyard because i, I have a nice garden back there definitely don't want to ruin my uh my hard work that i've been <laughs> attending to all summer so you can find this information again there's a couple different sites space.com uh space slash uh space dash track.org has a lot of info on this as well. You don't have to have a membership to join. Uh, they're posting updates here at the top as a uh, as a banner. And if you want to check into these latitudes and longitude um, areas, uh, find uh, findlatitudeandlongitude.com is one of them. Uh, many other sites you can type in in Google Earth if you want to and find out the exact coordinate. But uh, yeah, I, it's just, it's a little scary that it's uh, precisely right off the west coast here. It's, a, it's not good. And of course, the later, as uh, far as re-entry time goes, it could spread. Uh, it sucks because this really puts the United States in target here uh, for a possible re-entry somewhere over land. Now, if this was much further back, I'd feel a little bit better. But uh, right now... We're looking at this thing possibly this is the uh, approximate location where this thing should re-enter and uh yeah west coast just a heads up so time frame folks time frame let me go back here to the time frame here latest tracking and impact prediction uh shows re-entry at yet yeah, tomorrow 1722 utc time so what time is that that's going to be about 10.22 a.m. West Coast time. That's West Coast time. 10.22 a.m. West Coast time. So, of course, you know, Central Mountain Time and Eastern, so on and so on. You add your hours. But far as the West Coast goes, 10 a.m. Saturday uh, in the a.m. This is expected. 10.22 a.m. And, of course, this is subject to change as well. We're going to wait for the latest update. Uh, I will be watching this pretty closely and see if there's any uh, major changes to the coordinates there where this thing could impact. Could you imagine this thing crashing into San Francisco in a highly populated region? Wow, that would, uh, man, that would not be good. I don't wish that on anybody, but could you imagine the responsibility there of the uh, Chinese rocket, the Chinese folks there? Uh, you know, that's, whoops, you know accidents happen no i don't think so 
You know, we got to make appropriate measures to uh, make sure stuff like this doesn't happen. Anyway, let's move on into the earthquake department. I figured I would share that with you guys because I find that rather, rather um, interesting for sure. Okay, let's talk about the major activity popping off here along the Japan region. Uh, we're talking about areas around the uh, Kurokamachaka Trench northward and also into uh, areas south of Japan. We're seeing quite a bit of earthquake activity. This is only over the last 24 hours. Look at this cluster of earthquakes down here along this trench. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that name. I'll let you guys be the judge, but we got nine earthquakes uh, in the range of four to five out there. Largest so far, a 5.3 earthquake in the mix. Um, that's a lot of activity. From it going awfully quiet to a major swarm of moderate earthquakes is something to take heed. All this activity occurring, of course, following the large seven-pointer out in the Philippines there, there a couple days ago. Excuse me, I just got hiccups all of a sudden. Also, notice up here, Along the uh, Kurokam Chaka Trench, we're getting a swarm of activity up here as well. We have not seen any major large scale activity in this section of the Pacific Ring of Fire in quite some time. It's overdue, uh, far as I'm concerned, in the terms of slip rate. There's definitely enough slip rate accumulated stress here in this region to produce a large earthquake. And I'm talking a lot more than the five or six. So watch this area along the Pacific Ring of Fire very, very closely. Uh, further down south, things are pretty quiet along the Mariana Trench, the Philippines area for now. A little bit of activity around the Myanmar area. That was earlier today. Uh, a couple fours kicking off there. Not a whole lot of activity further to the west. A lot of that activity is older, including that movement out there in the Indian Ocean. Far as the Indonesia area goes and the uh, Kermadec Trench, we had one earthquake in the Kermadec Trench earlier this afternoon. 5.2 but look at this this has gone awfully quiet here folks so uh, a little bit of adjustment was taking place here in the deeper regions of the Tonga and the Fiji area uh, but once that happened we've seen a enormous uptick of earthquake activity here throughout this region of the uh, northwestern portion of the Pacific Ring of Fire so uh, I, I think it's overdue I really think it's overdue for seeing a large-scale earthquake activity here off the coast of Japan um, X marks the spot here throughout this region. Just remember that. Uh, throughout the South America region, things pretty quiet, folks. Some of this activity from uh, early this morning. We got one earthquake uh, later or earlier this afternoon, a 4.4 in the Bolivia area. Is that strange? I want to go visit that country one of these days. Uh, a whole lot of scenery out there I want to check out. But uh, major uh, seismically hazard zone there. That 4.4 uh, struck at 245 kilometers deep into the Peru Chile Trench. Uh, we got one earthquake down here in the South Sandwich Islands. Uh, looks like a 4.9 at the southern end there. Not that big of a deal. Puerto Rico Trench not showing any major seismic unrest. Let's check out the all magnitudes here. Uh, only looking at 10 earthquakes. That's pretty minimal for those folks there in the Puerto Rico region. Uh, Texas, Oklahoma, all minimal activity. The West Coast remains... Uh, somewhat below average and I say below average because it's really not lighting up like it should and that's that teeter-totter effect we've been talking about we've been seeing a lot of release of pressure here for these folks here along the west coast obviously increase in pressure uh, along these areas that have seen earthquake activity including the, the uh, Philippines all this activity here kind of relieving the stress here along the western coast uh, this kind of makes a, uh, let me see if I can find the, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. oh man, maybe I, well, this would kind of work. So look at the Pacific plate here in the yellow, kind of a yellowish type color here. Uh, when we see this movement here to the northwest, uh, west-northwest pressure, it does, in my term, relieve the pressure gradients here along the United States, the western coast. This area here kind of goes in a counterclockwise direction. Uh, coming from the north uh, northeastern direction, so when we're getting further movement here in this area, it kind of backs it kind of backs off a little bit here, far as pressure goes along the California region, and that's that's been ringing true here for the past couple days. We haven't seen any large scale activity, any type of swarming at all, only very minimal microquake activity. And if you look at the all 
or the uh, 2.5 and above. The only earthquake that struck out here above that was out in Mina, Nevada. And that was, uh, it looks like earlier this afternoon, the 3.0 that struck out there. But aside from that, only microquakes. And there's really nothing major to chat about here, uh, noteworthy at all in the California region when it comes to that movement. Uh, up here in the Pacific Northwest, yeah, Mount St. Helens had a little bit of activity, but again, this was from this morning time frame. Only a couple small microquakes in that area. I kind of want to check out the... Uh, let's check out Hawaii first before we move on. Let's check out Hawaii. Not a whole lot of activity. Look at this. Very minimal movement. Only 11 earthquakes here around Pahala, up around the Kilauea Volcano. Uh, Lohi Seamount looks pretty quiet. One earthquake somewhat nearby, 2.1. Uh, looks like at about 36 kilometers. I still think there's something brewing down here. I've got to watch that area pretty closely. Alaska, not a whole lot going on. Just a couple microquakes throughout the region. Uh, 2.5 and above. Only shows one up north. Uh, around the Brooks Range and one down here along the Aleutian Trench, a 3.2. All right, let's check out the trimmer map tonight along the Cascadia subduction zone. A measly 17 epicenters of vibrational tremors up here around the Vancouver Island ranges. Right smack dab in the middle. Northern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Not that big of a deal. Just uh, kind of taking it slow up there, it looks like. Uh, let's check out space weather real quick here, folks. And... Um, do, do, do see what we got for uh na, 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 na. actually i want to go over yellowstone here real quick we'll go back and forth not a whole lot going on here that i can s tell um let's see here what do we got a couple of these stations missing some data norris junction there that's a little bit of odd activity it almost looks like earthquake activity um it is showing up on some of these other seismograph stations here notice that these blips of earthquakes um, and when you go far and when we kind of go away from this area although this one's not showing it notice Norris Junction really isn't showing it around that time frame so I'm not for sure what's going on I do think it is somewhat earthquake activity related because some of it notice even these little blips here even as small as they are they're still showing a little bit of background blips and a little signatures there of earthquake so I'm not for sure if there's some type of geyser activity going on there or what, but it definitely looks like it is um, uh, there in the region. Also showing up down here around the Pitchstone Plateau. Notice this activity here. So I think that is earthquake activity, but it's rather odd. Uh, it's not large, but definitely might be some type of swarming going on here around the uh, area of Norris Junction and Mary Lake. We'll definitely keep an eye on that pretty closely. Solar, okay, solar weather activity. Go to solarham.net website. Of course, uh, looks green across the board, folks. Not a whole lot going on. It looks like there was a minor sea flare earlier today around AR3068 in the southeast quadrant. 3068. This little guy right here looks like it's growing. It's actually grown a little bit since this morning's update. A little sea flare popping off there. That's a little hope. Fingers crossed that this thing grows into a monster and produces a uh, pretty large flare. That's the about the only potential we have of uh, flaring in the coming days. Not a whole lot behind that. No major coronal holes to report that are facing us. Um, so we'll keep an eye on that for sure. A little hopeful. This guy, maybe the little solar, the solar sunspot that could. We'll see how we'll see how it plays out. All right, guys, um, if something changes here on the Chinese rocket re-entry, I will definitely let you guys know, and um, I will provide updates here on the channel or on the Facebook or my Twitter page or all. Um, but uh, I think it's something to watch pretty closely. I definitely don't want 5 to 10 tons of junk uh, falling down from space into any populated regions or my backyard. This is kind of cutting it close with those longitudes uh, and latitude type of uh, setup here. So West Coast not out of the clear. I notice on the news agencies they're not saying West Coast within the uh, debris range. They're just giving out longitudes and latitudes there. So that's why I kind of popped up the longitude and latitude maps for you guys so you can see 
where it's heading. Uh, could you imagine the, the panic that would probably ensue if someone would say, West Coast on target for a Chinese rocket re-entry? You know, it'd probably not be good. So they throw out longitudes and latitudes there to not scare the public. But I think everyone should be informed as to the potential debris uh, re-entry location there. So, uh, and that includes, like I say, me. And that's not good. All right, guys. Um, I'll chat you guys a little bit later. Stay safe out there. Uh, looks like a 4.3. It looks like a 4.3 around the Coral Islands area. Uh, we'll chat you guys very soon. Peace out.